Welcome, I'm so glad you're joining me. For those of you who are just starting, the Orca Swim Show is a weekly show where I bring both information about how the brain works when embarking on change, especially something that is fearful, and we take it to the lab of the swimming pool. After 30 years of teaching in the pool, it's time to hop out of the water and share how the learning works in and out of the water in the same way. The water is a perfect lab to test the learning process because you get fast and immediate feedback along with very satisfying rewards. When you focus on the needs of the brain-body connection and not just a list of skills, then you can obtain lasting and satisfying results. Our pool is a warm 92. Let's hop in and go from regret and missing out to action and freedom. Episode six, how to see clearly and choosing goggles. All right, welcome to episode six. Last week, we talked about getting to a neutral place so you can create the feelings you want before trying on a swimsuit. I paused because you could fill in the blank with anything you wanted there before having a conversation with your spouse, before stepping on a scale, before making a work project, whatever it is. You want to be in a place of that you can create the feeling that helps you move forward positively with the things that you want in your life. Go ahead and check out that episode if you missed it. Now, today we're going to talk about um, some tips for choosing goggles. But before we go into that, I actually have a um, download sheet for you on the tips for choosing the goggles. Before we go into that, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, how your brain works around this. So let's first talk about why you want goggles, why you want them. What, what are our thoughts about it? Uh, so going back to our foundation, we need to look at what our beliefs are about wearing goggles. So um, some possible beliefs are, do you believe that you can't see through the water if you don't have goggles on? Or it's not safe um, if you can't see? Or it will hurt if I get water in my eyes? Here are those some possible beliefs that you might have. Now, some of your beliefs may be true and some may not be true. The truth of many of these beliefs also might be variable, like a belief it will hurt if I get water in my eyes. Hurt is subjective. The truth is there is sensation when opening your eyes in the water and different water feels different. Just like drinking uh, different water feels different. When I go to my parents' house, in Southern California, I don't like the way it tastes. When they come and visit me here in Washington, they don't like how my water tastes. It tastes different, it's subjective. Different water will feel differently on your eyes. My husband doesn't mind salt water, sea water in his eyes, I don't really like it. <laughs> uh, it's subjective, there is a sensation, but it's subjective. Goggles will allow you to see clearly. This is a truth. You need air space in order to see clearly. What is not a truth is seeing clearly makes you safe or makes you feel safe. Just a little side story about eyes and mammals and safety. We are very used to and accustomed to relying on our eyes and our eyesight. But, um, I was listening to this interview of a person who specializes, he spends his whole life recording sounds. And he, it was noted that not all mammals can see, but nearly all of them, I think he said all of them, have some sort of hearing uh, or being able to detect vibrations in the way that we do with our ears. And we as animals don't have ways that we block that off, whereas we do have ways that we block off light. Our hearing is actually more important to us for safety from um, an evolutionary standpoint than sight is, which I found very interesting. Because it does make me think about 
an example about sight, how sight can be very tricky. Seeing is tricky. We assume that we need to see to be safe. But have you ever had the experience where you are walking along somewhere um, and you're feeling just fine and then you look down and you realize, oh my gosh, I am at a huge cliff or an edge or a drop off of some sort and it feels terrible. Um, or even I think about here in Seattle, we have the Space Needle. People generally will feel fine when they get off, you go up the Space Needle, you get off the elevator, you know, you feel fine. It isn't until you get to the edge of the observation deck and you look down that we feel terrible. Now, did anything actually change about your safety? No. There's something about your eyes is as tricky with your eyes. Your eyes can play this trick on you that says, I'm not safe. Because it connects to a part of your brain that's supposed to warn you about the future. And yeah, if you take one more step, no, that would be terrible. <laughs> and you wouldn't be safe. Uh, so you would want to know that in that sort of instance. Um, but it doesn't mean that you aren't safe in the right now. We see this in the pool oftentimes too, where people may be like they're back floating or they're um, just being really happy in themselves. And then they open their eyes and they realize, I'm over the deep water. And there's this sensation that I'm not safe, even though nothing has actually changed in their physical space or what's happening or their abilities. What has changed is their awareness and their attention is now outside of themselves. And there's a new belief about that. We want to be able to keep our awareness and our attention right here and not let our eyes um, deceive us. And we want to be able to see clearly and to see clearly means to have an awareness of what's happening right now. Not in the future, not in the past, but right now. Right now, that person, in the case of somebody who's back floating, and then they looked around and realized they were over the deep, they still have enough air, their buoyancy still works the same. When they bring their presence back to themselves, they can still figure things out in the same way but not if you use this tricky vision to let you get outside of yourself and too far ahead. So there is another example of how our beliefs or our thoughts influence our feelings and we will have a different reaction and experience to it. So as you go out into the world, keep noticing how these beliefs are influencing how you feel. Just like last week, I have a tip sheet for the goggles. Uh, so you can look at that because it is helpful to have some grounding information as well about any topic that you're leaning into that you're unsure of. So take a look at that, use that to help you with your confidence and join us online when you're ready to take the next steps and find out more. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Are you ready to take some action? Three ways to the freeway. Subscribe, join a free webinar, get started online where we break down the steps, making them simple and we support you along the journey. So maybe you'll join us in Hawaii. Jump on over to orcaswimschool.com.